Hans. Hi, Hi. Hans. Uh, Hi. Great to meet you. So um, it's awesome that we find the time to talk about this. Um, yeah, this topic about biological dentistry, about your legacy in cavitations. So obviously, this is Hans, my good friend, and also very, very well known as Dr. Johann Lechner. He is, in my opinion, the Yoda of cavitation surgery of the so-called Nikos or better FDOJ, fatty degenerative osteoclerotic jawbone. He's doing research in the field of biological dentistry, mainly cavitations, for the last 40 years. He's already 71 years old, lives in Munich, has still his office in Munich. And yeah, he's a true legend. I'm very happy that he's here. Hans, how did you get started with all the biological dentistry? Why got you, what did you interest in this topic like already 40 years ago? Yeah. Hi, Dominic. Good morning. Uh, uh, let me say thank you for building up this nice connection and to install this discussion. And um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I try to answer your questions perfectly and truly. And uh, okay, you might tell that I'm 71, but I say it's not my looking uh, which should be in the foreground. It's my experience now. Yes. Because to answer your question, I'm doing more than um, more than 40 years now. I'm engaged in integrative, holistic dentistry. And exactly 40 years ago, I started my clinic in Munich. And from first day on, we never used any mercury for fillings. Wow. And, and 15 years later, we threw out all metals from our therapies, from our dental crowns and dental bridges. And I installed this zirconium oxide technique for crowns and bridges. And as I saw how wonderful zirconium oxide in crowns and bridges is, I immediately follow our friend Uli Foltz in his zirconium oxide implants. Amazing. So when was it that you, so 40 years ago, no mercury. This is like really, truly a early adopter in the field. So when was it that you started using full ceramics? You said 15 years ago. This was in the 80s, no, no, 50, right? 50. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was in, um, it was in 95. In 95. So this is when I was only 12 years old. I didn't even know that I was going to be a <laughs> dentist later on. So this is truly amazing. But what really, why did you actually start with using, or why didn't you use mercury? How did you know that you don't like it? Was it from a vanity standpoint? Did you just not like the, the looks or, of the metals? Why did you, yeah, why did you get into this field? Because I think basically back then, like it's today, yeah, it's still mainstream dentistry uses mercury fillings up to this date. Yeah, yeah I was educated by dentists who uh, immediately were very critical to these mercury fillings. And uh, reading above what mercury is doing, especially mercury vapor, that mercury vapor goes off, gases out from the fillings in your mouth and immediately goes through your blood brain barrier. And this is what basically is damaging you. Um, we have cases where people tried to commit suicide by injecting mercury, liquid mercury, into the veins. This does not work. They still live. Crazy. But the vapor is the problem. And the more you brush with a toothbrush, you brush your mercury fillings in trying to keep your teeth healthy, the higher is the vapor level. So when you have mercury fillings, the dental advice should be keep them, but never brush your teeth. <laughs> that, that's a great <laughs> idea, yeah, because of the vapor that increase. Yeah, we know from biochemistry that vapor, mercury vapor is HDO and it's yeah, super volatile and it basically goes into every cell and then has to be scavenged by glutathione and yeah, otherwise it will be bound by, uh, will be changed by catalases and oxidized and then sticks into your brain. And depending on your brain chemistry, um, it stays there for at least 16 to 32 years. For some patients, as you know, even forever, because they're not able to get it out of their nervous tissue because of enzyme deficiencies, right? Yeah. So, 
So you met a lot of good um, experts. Like I re at the beginning, I said, I met you 2010 when I was just after graduating, after my first year of dental, um, yeah, of, of assistancy with a surgeon. And I never did amalgam fillings besides learning it at school. So I personally started not using amalgam because I thought it's just ugly. And you know, my dad is also a dentist and he wasn't using mercury fillings ever since the early 90s, probably shortly after you stopped using it and because of all the research. So I found Dr. Dietrich Klinghardt and all, the, all your friends and peers are all our colleagues back then. And through this research, actually, my dad was inviting me to a conference you gave back then uh, in Munich, 2010, where you invited a lot of good holistic dentists and also integrative doctors or biochemists like Boyd Haley was there talking about yeah. his new, his new um, heavy metal scavenger. Back then it was called OSR and now it's a little bit different name, but still there. Then Ulrich yeah. Foltz was there. I didn't see Ulrich Foltz there because I only was there on the second day. Um, you, of course, were there and you're talking about the root canals. So everything that I've learned in the first year kind of like connected there. And I was very impressed about cavitations and all things. And that there was this field of holistic or biological dentists already there, like you, like the old school doctors um, teaching me. Now it's like 10 years later. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are now peers. And let, let me know a little bit more about the, how did you found out, find out about the cavitations? Because it seems to be that this is your legacy. This is the stuff you dug into research. You're doing this for 40 years now. It's still not medically accepted. We are both doing surgeries for cavitations on a daily basis with tremendous results for our patients because we see the connection of the mouse and the overall health. Like you, yeah, like you're doing it for 30, 40 yeah. the, the answer is uh, like, I'm glad to be one of your teachers. I also had teachers. Okay. And uh, uh, in Germany, uh, this word of kiefer ostitis, that means the ostitis, chronic ostitis of the jawbone, was a subject which was greatly discussed in the 60s and 70s. And uh, for instance, uh, telling you a story, my teacher uh, 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 in northern Germany, his father was a great doctor in the German army. So immediately after, war, after the war, they had a lot of wounded soldiers. Mm -hmm. And they realized these soldiers, they took out root fillings, they cleaned this kiefer ostitis, let's say nikos or yeah. cavitations, they survived. And the other ones, they died. So, yeah, in, in, in the brains and in the, the evidence of these doctors, it was very clear to take out these chronic inflammations or chronic toxic loads by root fillings helps to survive these wounded soldiers. And they had many, many, let's say, guinea pigs to get to this evidence. It was not based very scientifically, but it was based on everyday life. And so in the 60s and 70s, the idea of holistic dentistry, or the idea that a holistic aspect of dentistry could save lives, was widespread. Wow, I didn't know that. And I got the benefit from that. Yeah. Now, today, of course, we cannot uh, work like these guy, guys 75 years ago. But this brought me to my, let's say, self-obligation to collect data, to get the scientific proof of these everyday experiences we have with our patients. And this is why I have now uh, 12 PubMed indexed papers where we scientifically proved that these chronic inflammations damage your body, your immune system, especially or mainly by these RANTIS overexpression. And RANTIS is a pro-inflammatory mediator. 
And this blow inflammatory mediator brings certain parts of your body, your weakest organ, let's say, into a chronic inflammatory state. And this is damaging your immune system. And we live in a great time because what can we learn from this corona disaster we have at the moment? We can learn that the most important part in your health is to keep your immune system free from chronic strain and chronic stress. Wow. Right. What what a perfect statement. Yeah, everybody's talking about Corona right now and the cytokine storm. So at least now everybody should know what pro-inflammatory cytokines are. And this is basically the work of us biological dentists and you discovering this. I didn't know that it was a big thing in the 60s and that empirically these dentists were yeah, knowing all these things because when I learned about this, this was somewhat that nobody was talking about at all. So for me, it was like, never heard anything about this in university, just knew amalgam is fine as long as you're not yeah. allergic to it. Root canals are fine. Titanium implants are fine. Because of course, we as dentists are trained in university basically as just high technique, manual labor craftsmen. And we are not we are trained as real, uh, we, don't, we are not trained to see the whole body picture. It's more like a reparation protocol, maybe an aesthetic thing. And of course, I'm interested in uh, self-optimization, health optimization, all these things for the last 20 years. And I've learned this basically intrinsically motivated to get me as healthy as possible. So this was my background story to get into all this and also on the other side the, the, the aesthetic point of view because I just didn't do amalgam fillings because they're ugly and then I learned all these things about root canal treated teeth from your conference from books from um, from people like um, um, Weston Price of course like True Legends or Dr. Dave, uh, um, Hal Huggins and we needed solutions so I just had to relearn the history stuff you already did that's when we found and I was just searching for solutions. And on this conference in 2010, this was really like, to me, it was like mind blowing all this research because I'm a big medical guy. I love functional, I'm a functional medicine doctor and also a naturopathic doctor. And funny thing is you were the, are the cause why I am actually a naturopathic doctor because back then in 2010, 2010 I was interested in the cavitations. And then of course I looked you up and you did the causes like a three day or two day seminar in your clinic about cavitation surgery. Of course, I had attended this cavitation surgery. And when I visited you in your clinic, you told me about why you became a naturopathic doctor because of all these other treatments like intravenous protocols, orthomolecular stuff, vitamins, minerals, because this is kind of like uh, the legal approach to doing everything. So initially, after meeting you and after doing the cause and cavitation surgery, I applied for a naturopathic doctor and just did the, yeah, I'm a naturopathic doctor too for almost 10 years now. It's because of you. I, I, love, I love to hear these compliments, uh, Domi, from you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm very glad to see that not only viruses can be infectious, but also ideas can be infectious. Yes, you are true. Yeah, you could see you are... Uh, uh, you infecting health in people uh, like you, that they are health, getting health conscious. Yeah, this is something you really installed me. This is this was inspiring to me because of course I'm very good. I'm skilled with my hands. I'm a good dentist. That was always clear, but something was missing. I was always looking for this point of view, like that we as a dentist can be real doctors. And in my opinion, nowadays and with the consequent biological dentistry we do and certainly of course of because of you all these because of you teachers like you like the yoda and cavitation and ulrich etc we now build something even bigger in terms of what i call biological dentistry nowadays it's more like the overlap of functional medicine health optimization biohacking and high-tech dentistry with the focus on optimal health by starting in your mouth that's basically where health starts and if you nowadays it's like you said the perfect timing in terms of research because now research is clear. We know that the pro-inflammatory state of your body or chronic side inflammation will lead to all chronic diseases, but nobody still is looking in your mouth for stuff like chronic elevated rantes or CCL5 it's called or 
Also, again, TNF alpha, interleukin 1, beta, IL 6, all these cytokines are now linked to major depression. They're linked to basically all diseases. And yeah, it's great that we can now use social media and all these things to spread this information as far as possible, right? Yeah. And uh, I always recommend my patients to go to Google Scholar. Yes. Google, everybody knows. Yeah. And Google Scholar is the scientific medical database of Google. And it's very interesting to see what happens when you type in, for instance, multiple sclerosis yes. and Rantius in Google Scholar. Have a guess how many scientific papers come up when you just type in these two terms. That means how many scientific medical papers just connect these two terms, multiple sclerosis and Rantus, with each other? Have a guess. Do you know? I don't know. Let's say 50? Honestly, you don't know. I tell you, it's more than 3,500 papers. And wow. you can read 3,500 abstracts. I didn't myself. But you can read this. And all are dealing with the connection somehow multiple sclerosis and rantis or ccl5 so what he is saying is that if you look for this pro-inflammatory cytokine rantis or ccl5 which is connected with cavitations or let's say nikos which is the layman's term in germany for neuralgia inducing cavitation osteoporosis and i know Dr. Lechner coined the term, which is better, FDOJ, fatty degenerative osteoporotic jawbone. And these pro inflammatory cytokines, if you type it in in Google, you will find 3,500 pages just linking Rantis and multiple sclerosis, which is an autoimmune disease, which clearly shows that there is at least a correlation, not, and not necessarily a causation, but it, it must be from our point of view that you have to look for root causes causes of chronic inflammation. And as you know, your whole jawbone is connected or like all these teeth and areas are connected to your brain through the trigeminal nerve. And of course, if you've done like we both do on a daily basis, cavitation surgeries, you know how nasty it looks if you see inflamed bones surrounding your brain. And if your brain, the, the trigeminal nerve is able to transport all these cytokines, for example, Rantis, into the brainstem, hypothalamus, pituitary, within 24 hours through something called retrograde axonal transfer. Then you know where the connection is because of the autonomic nervous system. There's always the nervous vagus, so the vagal nerve, which, can, which um, is connected to your whole, to all organs in your, in your body. So you will get into chronic sympathetic mode by a chronic stressor there, and you're not, you won't be able to relax, digest, rest, and like all the things you should do. And maybe this is something you have for 24 seven, 20 years long. Would you agree here? Yeah. And this can yeah, lead to all the processes. We, I love from the so-called regulation medicine, coming from the aspect the, that a healthy body has a proper regulation. Yes. That means proper regulation means that each stress which is coming onto your body, is yes. compensated. Yeah? Yes. The body is able to regulate on this external stress or internal strain. It might be psychological as well. Of course. And in case you have these chronic strains and these chronic inflammatory input, you get a dysregulation. That yes. means in case you get a strain, your body is answering in a false way to this strain. And then you get a disease. Uh, this is the idea. And I'm very happy I got this idea uh, to check these fatty lumps coming out of these fatty degenerating osteonecrotic areas. And to check these fatty lumps for their cytokine expression. And we checked for 26 cytokines. And only one cytokine came up very high in each of these fatty lumps, and up to now we have more than 1,000, is Rantis. That means we dentists, 
we have to deal with a very specific form of chronic inflammation, which is absolutely unique in Chobo. Nowhere else in the body you have these chronic runtis overexpression. Mm -hmm. Runtis is a very healthy um, uh, process of the body to deal with inflammation. It's, it's um, um, enfancing or fencing in the inflammation, yeah? but when the inflammation is healed and is gone, runtis goes down. That means in a healthy body, Rantis has no function. Perfect explanation. I, I will just get this is the acute. This is the acute part of Rantis, which yeah. is wonderful, which is just wonderful. But when you have these chronic bad wound healing from wisdom teeth uh, surgery, from tooth extraction, whatever it is, underneath root fillings, you have this chronic form of Rantis and input. And this is what is provoking infection or inflammation in other parts of your body. For instance, in the brain. When you have runtis in your jawbone, your brain might react, your astrocytes, especially your astrocytes, brain is consisting of about 80% of astrocytes, mm -hmm. your astrocytes are reacting with a subtle form of inflammation. And this might create migraine, headache, depression, whatever it is. Yeah. So just to translate this for the audience, so make it easier, what Dr. Lechner is saying, this runtis is totally healthy if your body is healthy and able to compensate. But always the problem is chronic overactivation of cytokines. In this case, the runtis or CCL5 gets problematic. I even know that you have a peer-reviewed study done with um, Volker von Baer who also links it to um, mammalian carcinoma. Is that correct? Yes, we have uh, breast cancer. This is also, we have uh, 38 breast cancer patients mm -hmm. and we realized that all, each patient with breast cancer had high runtis in trouble, high runtis oh. expression in trouble. And when you again go back, let's say to literature, but most impressive is Google Scholar. You type in breast cancer and Rantis, CCN5, CCN5, and you get nearly 6,000 papers. Wow. So why not eliminate the source of Rantis expression in jawbone, let's say NICO areas, FDOJ areas, whatever we call it, Mm -hmm. Why not eliminate this runtus source to give the tissue of breast cancer or whatever it is, brain, breast, prostate, the same, to get rid of this consistent inflammatory signaling pathways? Amazing, yeah. Chronic just... silent inflammation is the problem and it will lead to chronic disease. Like, uh, like Hans is saying, every tissue, it's maybe it's the one that your body is a little bit susceptible to. This could be a genetic thing, um, if it's your brain or if it's your breast, whatever. But it's clear if you go into Google Scholar and look for evidence that you find 6,000 um, papers just by typing in Rantis and um, breast cancer. And Rantis is specific for Nico cavitation areas which happens i would say in you would probably agree in 99 percent of all cases of patients that get re regularly um remove their get their their wisdom teeth regularly removed by conventional dentists without preparation without taking care of if the patient is anyways able to build bone build yeah. tissues so this is one of my concepts that came in of seeing all these in in in, in points of functional medicine because i'm you know, I have a lot of knowledge in nutrition and, and all these things to what can we do to make sure that these don't develop in the first place, right? The cavitation. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an aspect of how to deal with these wounds. And just to uh, take out the tooth and then to forget the body and say, oh, it's curing in himself. Yeah, the tissue is curing itself. 
this is a wrong, uh, a totally wrong aspect. The body needs support to get a proper wound healing. We do a lot of infusions. We do a lot of, um, of supplements. Uh, you do, uh, you're a specialist in this area. You do a lot of uh, food recommendations, yeah? how to feed themselves pro uh, properly. This is just wonderful. The problem we have is we never can promise any success because we never know when we take off the signal, uh, we never know is the damaged or diseased organ really recovering. Of course, this depends on many other things. Yeah? But we can say this chronic inflammation contributes a lot to this bad signaling. And uh, let's say we have, uh, we all know about other signaling pathway, pathways, which are well known. These are hormones. You know, hormones are created up there, here in the pituitary, and then the effect is a bit further down in the body. Yeah? Nobody is amazed that these signals are produced up there and have an effect further down. Yes. But, yeah. But normal dentistry still is fighting against the idea that inflammatory signals in jawbone also might create damage in some organs further down, let's say prostate cancer, colon cancer, whatever it is. Yeah, this is a, this is a problem where we always try to, this is also what I tried to do with the book um, I, that came out, It's All in Your Mouth, because I've written it for the layman, just to explain, and I'm, you know, I'm giving a lot of seminars for dentists like yourself too, because they don't, they're not trained in, I, I think they're missing the code sometimes. What is really, what is yeah. immunology? What is toxicology? How does liver phase one and two work? What about gut health? What about hormones? What about thyroid? What about the HPA axis, um, hypothalamus pituitary axis? So if you don't know all these things, you might as well just look at, again, the mouth from a reparation point of view or maintenance. So your regular dentist just goes there and checks, okay, is there any cavity? We have to drill, maybe pull the crown, maybe remove a tooth and build a titanium implant. But so you could say biological dentistry is, is telling patients that the mouth is a part of the overall body, basically. And you cannot just do things on your teeth and leave inflammation. So it goes as you would agree. We, we both see panoramic x-rays of patients. They have no pain. And they've been to a regular dentist. For, and I'm a big fan of all you dentist guys out there. So for all of us, we're dentists. So we're not against dentists. It's just like there's missing links in terms of overall health and knowledge. So we will look at an x-ray different from our point of view, but they came, come to us, they're having five root canal treated teeth for 20 years, having cysts the, the size of P shapes and huge cavitations, nothing hurts. So the only questions the dentists were asking was, does it hurt or can you buy it? Yes, no problem. So then we just monitor this and let's see what happens. But Hans and myself, we know exactly a chronic sign of inflammation, like a for example, a cyst on an apex of a root canal treated tooth is pretty common. And if you do a cone beam scan, like we all do, it's almost like 90% of all root canal treated teeth have signs of chronic inflammation there. And if you now know that chronic inflammation, overexpression of cytokines, rather would be rantis or like the normal innate inflammatory cytokines like TNF alpha, IL-6, interleukin-1, beta, all these lead to chronic inflammation in your body by starting here and traveling from here to your whole system. Of course, we will look at the whole concept more different. So both of us, we are looking, are there any metals in your mouth that could lead to inflammation or toxicity or also electrosensitivity? Are there root canals with, with they are toxic, you could be immunologically um, allergic to them, or they could just disrupt the nervous system or having cysts. And of course, we look for cavitations. It's kind of like the all-in-one approach. Why? Because we want to eliminate the stressors that come from inside. Because actually your body reacts to all stressors in the same way. It will detect the stressor. It tries to regulate it for a while and compensates for this in terms of the autonomic nervous system. And your body will just, it could be emotional stress or let's say you're driving in a car. Yeah. And then somebody is doing a, a fast break in front of you. Initially, you have a dry mouth. 
Initially, your heart pumps and you go into this fight and flight mode, sympathetic mode. So your body senses the stressor. And if the stressor is chronically in your mouth, the, the activation in your brain producing cortisol, adrenaline, noradrenaline, and put you into a sympathetic nervous system is kind of like the same. Would you agree? And yeah, we would, we would say you are uh, this root feelings, uh, uh, Nikos, FDOJ, whatever it is, brings you in a permanent alarm state. Yes. And uh, there is um, a man, he was Swedish, Hans, also Hans Selye. He got the Nobel Prize in 1924 for defining this alarm state. Yes. Because this alarm state, you, you, you were talking about this uh, traffic accident, okay? Yes. Your alarm state in the traffic accident is a very acute one. Yes. It goes up. And then when you realize, oh my God, uh, my front bumpers are still alive, yeah. uh, it goes down again. Okay? Yeah. But the problem with a root filling, the problem with a not badly healed uh, wisdom uh, area, wisdom tooth area, yeah, this is a chronic state. And this chronic state is not, is not uh, visible or is not um, to feel for the body because it's slowly going up and going up and going up. And when you are up there, your heart, you get arrhythmia in your heart. You get high blood pressure. And let me say, uh, doing these uh, cavitation surgeries for more than 40 years uh, now, one of the easiest things is to bring a patient down from chronic high blood pressure. Yes. Wow. You clean, their, you clean their cavitations out and they throw away all their beta blockers and what they ever use. Yeah. Yes, if you, and if you take it even further, if you, if you address everything, like you, you take out everything that could possibly lead up to a chronic overactivation of the sympathetic or this um, fight and flight uh, mode that is chronically elevated, like metals, root canals, cavitation, that's what we call the all in one concept it will slow down even faster and brings you out of this. And this is, on my, in my opinion, if you word it differently, it's a longevity strategy. It's an anti-aging thing to get your body out of the state of chronic inflammation. Uh, let, me say, let, let me say a number. Let me say a number. Of Actually, course. getting it from uh, my friend Brownstein in, US, uh, in the United States. Yeah, They have more than 200,000 uh, 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 dying people from Corona, mm -hmm. and how many cardiovascular uh, deaths they have in the US per year? Six hundred fifty thousand, threefold more than these Corona deaths. Of course, yeah, yeah you know, so, like the, the 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 killer in itself is mostly probably like chronic disease in terms of self-afflicted stuff like obesity is and the related diseases like metabolic disorder, heart rate, like heart diseases. This is yeah, the, the killer number but, one, you know? But this simple example shows us two things, yeah? Uh, heavy metals, root fillings, cavitations, yeah? They have two directions of efficiency to your body or endangering your body's health. This is the immune system, Yes. And this is the parasympathetic regulation about this concept of, uh, of alarm, state of alarm. Yes. Uh, so it's the immune system, it's this parasympathetic thing, yeah? and how it works on our psyche, on our psyche emotional dysregulation. Of course. We have two numbers like that. Yeah, of course, if you're in chronic stress, let's see you constantly in fight and flight, constantly in war zone. Of course, you don't feel as good as you would if you can relax throughout the night. So we, we both see patients that are in this activated sympathetic nervous system due to all these stressors for 20 years, 30 years, and cannot regulate anymore. So they load up on toxins, the immune system gets shut down. So if we would frame it in terms of 
what we need right now, what we need right now is being as relaxed as possible. Why? Because then your immune system can work. If there's any chronic stressor, you are not as healthy as you could be, right? And your immune system won't work as well. So I think it's, it's more like a survival strategy to get rid of all things that could lead up to an inflammation or chronic ongoing inflammation in your body. As you're saying, an acute one is fine because acutely, of course, if there's a crash, you get in fight and flight. But 10 minutes later, you realize it's all fine. Acutely, you can get in stress from an email in the morning from your boss. But chronically having elevated pro-inflammatory cytokines like the Rantes or, or all the other ones, and also, of course, elevated levels of toxins. This is the problem because your body has to deal with it every day. And at one point, just like the, the little barrel overflows, and then you get all these symptoms and problems, correct? It, it also might be your shouting mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Like everything that you I had a nice mother-in-law. I had a nice one. <laughs> very, very well cooking. But this is the point, you know, yes. where the stress comes from. Yes. or how the chronic stress looks like is not that important. Important is how are you able to regulate on this stress? Yes. And, this, and all we are talking about in our holistic dentistry, all these items are bringing down your ability to regulate properly. Because we never know which chronic strain is coming from the taxman, is coming from the next virus, uh, pandemia, whatever. Yeah, but it's the basic aspect to keep the, ba the, the body's regulation free from this state of alarm, from this chronic strain. Yeah, so basically what, what Dr. Lechner and me personally are doing is we are trying to help all our patients getting to optimal health, not just absence of disease, but will be, so our one goal is to get you in parasympathetic by removing all the trash out of your mouth and all the silent inflammations. But we're not just bringing you into our clinic and doing this. We will prepare your body and your inner doctor to be able to heal and recover. Yeah, because of course, one thing is the surgical part or the dental part, which could be, if you're like an old school and surgeon, could be very traumatic, but we are doing everything as minimal invasive as possible, using kids and surgeries and all these things. But what we do is, let's say, we remove the source of chronic toxicity, of chronic stress, of chronic inflammation in a city. But also, and I call it the health matrix, what we do is, personally, we change your lifestyle with the food design concepts. I will implement all strategies so that your body will come into this week fully boosted immunologically and, and has all the tools to recover, like amino acids, protein, healthy fats, etc and the bone healing protocol to support micronutrients, vitamins. That starts at least four to six weeks prior just to be able to heal and recover. And we use quantification. So we will do blood work. We will um, give supplements and IV nutrients just to help with infection control, prophylaxis, and we do APFMs, everything and actually to help your body. So we are just there to help your body and your inner doctor will be able. Then you can do Stuff you can do at home already is get your diet in check, get your nutrients, go out in nature, ground yourself, relax yourself, get your immune system more relaxed. And all these things, the only stuff you cannot, let's say, biohack your way around is going to a holistic dentist that helps you with these chronic things. Yeah. So yeah. The, the new chapter, Dominic, uh, uh, dentists like you and me, uh, the new chapter we are opening is uh, to get away from specific diseases. Yes. We do not want to cure specific diseases. Basically, we want to improve the background of each disease. Yeah? And this is, this is the key, and I think uh, no other medical profession is bringing so much foreign material inside the body than dentists. No other uh, medical profession is working so much with extractions and wisdom teeth surgeries inside the body like dentists. And so it's pretty clear that here we are at the focus for damaging 
this unspecific background or for improving this unspecific background. Get away from specificity. Yes. Get back to this unspecific, unstrained background. This is the whole idea. Amazing. It's all, that's exactly what I tell my patients. So basically, I wouldn't even call ourselves dentists. I would call ourselves doctors. Everybody out there should be a doctor or health optim optimizer. It's all about improving your health and getting better. It's not about the symptoms and that you stay away from them, like absence of disease. It's more like, how can we get better daily, daily, daily? So for example, we are doing, we are specialists. I'm an oral surgeon like Hans. That means we are very good and we can do surgeries, but it's a technique. I'm quite sure that Hans would be yeah. able to do a heart surgery if you explain him the anatomy and how to use the, uh, the knife, the scalpel and the sutures and he knows the anatomy. You could do this. In my opinion, and probably enhanced too, doctors in the future or starting now should be able to know everything from a functional medicine point about the whole body, how to improve hormones, how to optimize your sleep, how to do your lifestyle practices, how to use everything to get better besides the specific technique we're using on a daily basis. You, we both start by working on your mouth because this is the entrance to your body, but Every doctor in the future should be able to, be, to know with looking and quantifying data like lab work and looking at panoramic x-rays and knowing about the health part, but also knowing about other things. How can we improve the lives and the health of our patients? That's why I like the term health optimization so much. So there's this field of biohacking and I'm, a, I'm known as a big biohacker now. I never liked the wording too much. Now I like it because it's, this, it's the stuff the cool kids do, but my good friend, Tim Gray from, um, from England, he started the Health Optimization Summit last year. And health optimization, this is what we need to do. He really aligned all the good doctors, which are all, spe all of them have specialties, but they all know about the full body concept. And now we're teaching that the mouse is also a part of not just gut health, gut health starts in your mouse, like geeky gum. So this is like you're saying, it's a new chapter you're leading the forefront for this. I'm just bringing in new ideas from functional medicine. And we now melt it all together and overlapping functional medicine, biohacking, health optimization, high-tech dentistry surgeries. Why? Because we have the fulfilling part for us, both of us is, right? Helping patients, getting rid of their chronic problems and really getting to experience health. This is what fulfills us, is this correct? And, and to get to that point, you were wonderful, uh, wonderfully explaining this. To get to this point, I tried to deliver the tools. And one of these tools is my new ultrasound machine. Yes, I wanted to ask you about which this. Precisely, which precisely shows these bone marrow defects. That means this diminished mineralization of the spongial bone area. And were exactly in all these bone marrow defects, you find these fatty lumps and you find these runtis sources. This is the focus of these runtis expressions. And uh, I say it's very simple to explain to somebody how radio waves work in case you have a radio. You switch on the radio and the other one is absolutely convinced because he's listening to the voice transmitted by the radio. So he has to accept the existence of radio waves. The same thing is with our NICO, with our FDOJ. Why is it so little unknown in the dental community? Because it's not, or not easy, to see these cavitations on X-rays. So they don't believe in the existence of these cavitations. But now with the ultrasound machine, with our new Cavi tower, you precisely can see these cavitations. Why doubt on a phenomenon you can see? Yeah, this doesn't make sense. This is just amazing what Hans or Dr. Lechner is talking here about right now. So the gold standard we're using right now in the clinic in all biological dentistry training is a cone beam it's a three-dimensional or DVT, like cone beam scan. And this is forensically accepted, but you have to learn and you basically have to know how an oscillatic process on a cone beam on a three-dimensional x-ray 
looks like. So what he developed is the Kavitao machine, which is an ultrasonic, correct? That further shows you areas and gives you more data on what really is the problem here. And yeah, and the doubt will go away because our goal is not just to bring it into, like finally get it accepted by all our other dental colleagues. This is of course one goal and needs to be done because we all here to help, but also to show you as patients and get more data and get more research done because of course we are starting empirically. So Dr. Legner started empirically and me too by doing all these things and always research follows. Getting tools nowadays, kind of like biohacking it now, is just amazing and I, as soon as th this thing is there, so I know we have it already and I will have it soon in my office and can't wait actually to see how all this works. I've seen a lot of slides and a lot of um, 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 Hans's you know, or diagnosis, like it's to, easy to see. It's amazing. To tell, to tell you a story, uh, we have a, a, lately we had a patient uh, with uh, facial pain, trigeminal neuralgia, yeah, yes. yeah, uh, uh, for five years now. Yeah, she brought four kilograms of X-rays. Wow, <laughs> a heap like this with a weight of four kilograms. We did one ultrasound diagnosis with the Cavitao. No radiation stress. Yeah, it's amazing. Totally yeah. harmless because the babies the, in mother's warms also get the ultrasound. Yeah totally uh, without any radiation strain. We immediately saw this, we cleaned the cavitation and immediately the pain was gone after five years of chronic facial pain. And yes. this is the difference. Yeah. And I would you say and me and like our, our, our other friends, yeah, yeah, for us it's hardly to understand why uh, the majority of dentists in Germany, in the US, worldwide, yeah. still are not willing to acknowledge this phenomenon. Yeah, I think it's again the problem of the, the knowledge, they're, they're just lacking the knowledge of um, immunology, toxicology, all these things and not connecting this. It's more like still just the tiny grasses. Of course, from history, we've been um, dentistas yeah you know like 100 years ago we weren't medical doctors but now we are medical doctors and we have a unique field we can see in a second look in your mouth we can see your microbiome we can see dysbiosis we can see foreign materials metals antennas we have emf everywhere so i don't know if you've read this book already hans um, about electromagnetic fields yeah. uh, dr mccola and Dietrich and you, we, we, we know that electromagnetic fields are a huge problem for years and protecting ourselves, right? Just, just, to, tell you, just to tell you, an American friend was sending me an email and asking uh, what I, with my scientific papers on these cavitations and these cytokine expression, is thinking on the electromagnetic fields. Yeah. How, how is G5 working? or uh, interfering with these uh, cavitations? And the answer is, we have not only high runtees in cavitations, we also have high interleukin-1 receptor antagonist. Yeah. That means the receptor antagonist is blocking the EL interleukin-1 effect. And when you check, science doesn't know much about it, but IL-1 is radio protective that means the cavitations damage or diminish uh, your body to be radio protective so all emf things also have connections to the cavitations wow look at this guys it's just like electromagnetic fields what i'm talking about a lot are a stressor in itself and cavitations actually even make it worse because they block a cytokine, which is actually protective against electromagnetic fields. Exactly. And it's EL1, interleukin-1. It's interleukin-1. And also what I'm always saying, and you too, having any sort of metal in 
installed everywhere in your body. Could be your hip, could be your, another joint, but most of the time you have metals installed into your mouth. And we know from research that if you do a phone call while having mercury fillings, the mercury vapor release is amplified yeah. just by having yeah. a phone call. That's crazy if you know that mercury is the most toxic non-radioactive element and is inflammatory and is toxic and whatever, and you have it a filling and you cannot biohack your way around everything, all these things. Yeah. And also, of course, you know, titanium implants can be antenna. There are studies showing that Absolutely. We, basically we are an electric we have an electric body, so we have minus 60 millivolts in our cells. We know that electromagnetic fields will open uh, calcium voltage depending calcium channels and opening the cells and calcium will flood into your cell leading to oxidative stress. Yeah, because normally you have um, a negative uh, voltage inside your cell, magnesium inside your cell, but if calcium comes in, more stress, more stress. If you now know that if you have metals installed and you anyways have 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, everything surrounding you, yeah. and you know it amplifies everything of this, you're more susceptible to get electrosensitive, which is a huge problem of all our chronic patients, right, Hans? Absolutely. We had one patient, she could listen to radio with her metal in the mouth. She couldn't say, is it Beethoven or is it Bach? But she could say, it's music or it's language. It's crazy, right? So you can also just word it differently, just for you guys out there. If you're having, so voices in your head could just be electrosensitivity. And of course, if you go to doctors that no, don't know about electrosensitivity, you might end up, or everybody with chronic problems, a lot of our patients end up in this psychiatric space. So you have too many symptoms to be explained by a name of the disease. You probably end up getting the diagnosis of depression, right? Yeah. But it's only just overactivation of um, pro-inflammatory state in your body and depletion of neurotransmitters, depletion of hormones, stress hormones. It's like a full body concept. And yeah, also, and this is something I learned from Dietrich. He was saying, if it's psychologic, the symptoms, 95% of the root cause is always in your body. And 70% of root cause for chronic disease is in your mouth, right? Uh, we have uh, up to 75% of our patients come to us with psychopharmacological medication. The same here. And the majority of them says, this absolutely does not help me. It's just changing my personality. And it doesn't help me. Yeah, and yeah. This, this is what I said before. Doctors try to kill the symptoms. Yes. No. We try to improve or take away the, the bad things in the background, and then the symptoms, when we are lucky, and the patient is lucky, the symptoms go away by themselves. It's self-curing. If you help the inner doctor, and that's what we do, you, you need to remove the source. In this case, for example, the cavitation, and Hans has written three books. Those are books like this, like massive books. They're in my office. They're back here. It's called Cavitational Osteonecrosis of the Jawbone. Is it in English available? I actually don't know. Uh, we are working on that. Uh, but we, I have a lot of English papers. All my scientific papers are in English anyway. Yeah, they, I know the period with papers, but these books are amazing for the patients out there. It's, uh, we have that in the clinic and basically all our patients in the waiting room read your books because there's so many case studies in there which you actually can see maybe just empirically but if we now explain it logically, for, for what we are giving to you is like just functional medicine science of the overall body. How is your immune system working? How is the connection of major depression and pro-inflammatory yeah. cytokines? There's papers enough. You just have to know how it works. And this is not something you get trained. So coming from a psycho-emotional trauma, what you said, treating the symptoms is kind of like absence of disease. We are interested, and this is what fulfills us, is how to get you off medication and as healthy as possible. Maybe the medication is needed. Maybe you get out of chair car, like Tim would say, my friend, because you maybe need, a, uh, you need it real quick to, to see the light again, but the goal should, should never be chronic medication. The goal should be get, ridding, get rid of your symptoms by improving your health and taking responsibility, right? We are not trying to abolish medicine. No, we just try to widen to widen the aspect. 
exactly. We are more open-minded. So both, we are both medical doctors and naturopathic doctors. By that, it's basically obvious that we are very open-minded and we are yeah. only searching for health. So my top priority is health. Yeah. For me and everybody else, and I know it's, just, it's the same priority for me. And if you make this the focus, it's not about a ceramic implant. It's, it's only about how to help get the patient out of chronic stress, chronic inflammation, and chronic problems, right? And two, yeah, to see the light, basically, of overall health. Dominic, I think this was a wonderful sentence, wonderful words uh, to uh, give an end to our great discussion. Yeah, Is this okay? Yeah, of course. It's uh, you actually perfectly in time. No, perfectly in time. Perfectly the one hour that we discussed. Hey, Hans, thank you so much for all your work, for being the Yoda and Cavitation, one of my biggest teachers. And I'm very lucky that we are now experts in the same field and working and trying to help as many people as possible. And soon we will have a little meetup with, with the two of us and show the Cavitao and all the things you're working yeah. on. And I'm so, I'm so glad to have young and dynamic followers. Yeah. So the idea will not die with me. This is very important. No, this is 100% your legacy, and I will make sure that this, this is, everybody will know about this. And I'm very grateful yeah. for all the teachers. Okay. Compliments. Back to you.